Well, Governor Purdue has declared a state of emergency in nine Georgia counties after seven tornadoes tore through the area. One of the hardest hit places was America's, and that's where 11 Alive's Ted Hall is live tonight with details on the aftermath. Ted? Absolute mess here, Wes. It really is brutal. Two people died here in Americus, but it is anything but a quiet night after the storm. Fifty different law enforcement agencies have converged here. They're all here to protect those pieces that still have to be picked up. The streets are busy, but almost all the cars have blue lights. Security is the priority tonight. Curfew, 6 p.m., we're asking everybody is off the streets. Everybody, no hanging out. Uh, they need to be on their property or within their houses. The curfew should keep empty homes safe. It also gives workers a chance to get the power back on. In the light, you can see the damage. Hundreds and hundreds of buildings destroyed here. The devastation is, uh, is terrible. Uh, the, uh, we're, we're just fortunate that there were no more fatalities based on the property devastation that's here. Within our county, 21 miles of damage, and, and at some points, three miles wide. You know, and I've been in this working at this hospital for almost 10 years, and this is incredible. This it doesn't really, look like what you. It doesn't to. look like what I'm used to. You know, thank God nobody lost their lives. I, I was uh, at my home. I didn't even realize that a tornado had struck the hospital. I was able to get as far as uh, Reese Park and basically had to uh, park before the tornado. You really couldn't see the hospital from Reese Park. But I could see the hospital uh, in the distance and of course most of the blinds and windows were blown out and the uh, alarm system had gone off so all the uh, white strobe lights for the fire alarm system were blinking in unison in the distance. And it was a very eerie sight I'll never forget. This is the hospital's OB ward. When the storm hit, several mothers and babies were being treated, even in this room, where the wall blew out, even as the mother was still in bed being monitored. The nurses, uh, they were phenomenal. I mean, they were just awesome. They came and warned us that the storm was approaching to move away from the windows and uh, me being reluctant, <laughs> but I did. I was obedient and uh, my wife and my daughter were in the room and they we pushed them over in the corner. Uh, and then all of a sudden about 30 seconds later, uh, it sounded like a shotgun shot the windows out and it's like they heard this train, like the train sound. It was an eerie sound. But uh, it sounded and then we moved over in the corner and for about, I don't know how long it happened, for about two minutes or so. It was just, the, the building was shaking, windows were rattling, and everything was going on in, there, in the room. And I just prayed, and I called on the Lord, man, and, and, and uh, God kept, kept us and protected us in that place. And, uh, and uh, my granddaughter's fine, and uh, just amazingly, nobody uh, got hurt. How can you see this, and everybody comes out alive, you know? We, it, it's incredible. It's incredible. And our staff is incredible because they got every patient out of this hospital. We are recognized as a facility that is very, very focused on patient safety initiatives. And see, to me, uh, that is, that's exactly what uh, carried us through this disaster. Considering this has never happened to another facility, to the point that it did us, uh, yes, there were cases from Katrina to uh, other storms that have temporarily knocked out facilities or, or hampered their day-to-day -day activities and services, but never has one been totally closed, such as we have been. I was mostly scared for my family. Uh, my wife and my daughter, we kind of hovered over each other in the corner, and as you can see by the bathroom, that was the only thing that really protected us, was the corner there, because everything in that room stored, it. I mean, the window glass and everything was flying, and it seemed like it pushed everything towards the door. That was kind of shaky. I never want to be in that situation again, but, you know, we can replace material things, but uh, life, you know, is something so precious. Administrators say there are more than 50 patients being treated in the hospital when the storm struck, including one person in this room who miraculously was able to get out without any further injuries. The outside is not as bad as inside. I mean, we really have a total loss here. This has really been a devastation for the hospital. We've worked with disaster management for years and years and years and practiced and drilled and that sort of thing, but it's much different in how you respond to the disaster when you are the disaster. 
normally as a hospital, we are the recipients of the victims of disaster. But that night, we, we were the disaster. To all of our employees that have spent endless, tireless hours, uh, hours that took away from their families and uh, uh, the sweat and blood that was let and um, tears and just basically the hard work that get a little emotional about it, but all the hard work that they really have done and have risen to the top. Couldn't expect a better crew of people. It's a real reflection on the community. There is a special bond that is formed with people that go through a, a very stressful situation. There is a normal um, grieving type period for something that you've lost and a lot of us have lost a facility that was part of our lives and um, for a very long time because there are a lot of people that have been uh, working at that facility their whole professional career and there are people that were born in that facility, so grew up in that facility. Uh, I'm one of those. Those four walls are more than just four walls to a lot of people. The community is standing right behind us and we're gonna get it rebuilt because we're committed to, the, to this community.